Hello, everybody, and welcome to our webinar today. My name is Michael Siggins, and I'm the founder of the Channel Pro Network and IoT Playbook. Thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, our network includes websites, events, and a monthly magazine for managed service providers and technology integrators. Our mission is really a very simple one. It's to provide you with the information, insights, and resources that you need to run a more successful business. Today's webinar is a perfect example of the kind of info that can help your business. Our topic today is white label plug and play, pre-configured IoT sensors and solutions for carriers, network operators, MSPs, VARs, and SIs. Our special guests today are Kevin Bromberg, Kevin's CEO at My Devices, and also Cameron Roxy, head of sales at My Devices. Uh, before we begin, uh, just a quick couple of quick housekeeping notes. Uh, this um, webinar today is presented by Channel Pro Network and IoT Playbook and with the support of My Devices. And uh, we'd love you to get involved, our audience. So we always encourage your feedback and questions. It makes for a much better experience. So uh, the team is going to be watching the chat area and the Q&A area. If you've got questions or insights for us, please send them along and we will do our best to answer them during the presentation today. We will also follow up tomorrow with additional information and a link to the recording plus some more resources. All Ooh. right, now I'm going to turn things over to our special guests. Cameron, please take it away. Well, cool. thank you, Michael. Appreciate it. Um, I'm Cameron, head of sales at My Devices, and we've also got Kevin Bromper, all our CEO. Kevin, hello, everyone. Before we really start kicking off, we'd like to get our know our uh, audience a little bit better. So, in the chat, if you could tell us where you guys are dialing in from, that'd be really cool. So, inside the chat, um, just you know, tell us where you're calling in from, and uh, we'll give a shout out to you. Also, the QA. We like to keep these things very interactive, so it's not very traditional type of. Uh, presentation. We like to actually, you know, hear about use cases and questions that you have. So about halfway through the presentation, we actually start to answer some of the questions. Um, so just out of curiosity, where do we have some of these people coming in from? We've got Nathan uh, all the way from New York City. By the way, we're Sweet. broadcasting out of where? We are in Burbank, California. Yeah. And what's right next door? We even have like the Ellen show going on. That's yeah, right there. Right there. Yep. So yeah. we're like, we're like big, big stars. And here. we're also live on LinkedIn for the first time ever. We're going live on LinkedIn. So I don't know really how that's going to play out, but hopefully pretty well. Hopefully we see a lot of people. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, that's the part I'm a little, <laughs> I'm a little worried about because uh, we're just going to hit the live button and see what happens. We're also restreaming on YouTube. Um, we've got Richard coming in from Bristol, <clears throat> Connecticut. And I don't know where Bristol is, but I know where Connecticut is. So we're getting the East coast uh, going. We've got Frederick County Lee in Maryland, um, who's interested in precision agriculture use cases. So um, we'll save that for a little bit later. Um, we've got Chicagoland. So all these East Coasters, Rick Miller from Chicagoland. Claude is from Virginia. We've got Jeffrey from New Jersey, the shore, calling in from the shore. And then we've got uh, SVT Robotics coming in from uh, North, Norfolk, Virginia. We've got another Chicago. And um, uh, let's see here, uh, can you guys hear us okay? Because it seems like uh, it, it might be a little bit low. So we'll just make sure our volume's up. We have improv engineers from St. Louis. We have Christian Cook from Atlanta and people say that they can hear us okay. Sweet. So um, what do you think? Should we just jump into it? And Yeah, let's jump in. First of all, I, just through looking at the chat and seeing where people are at, we've got people from all over. I also want to say thanks to, obviously, there's a few partners on their existing partners that are on the chat as well. So Improv Engineers, SVT Robotics, and a few others that I saw in there. Thank you guys so much for joining. We're super excited to see you on here. Um, but yeah, Kevin, why don't we just take it away? Great. Jump in. Okay. So Kevin's going to share a screen here and kick off with just a, a few quick slides. Like we said, it's going to be pretty interactive. So throw questions in the chat as we go. Um, and then we're going to jump out of this and get more into kind of a demo, you know, clicking around showing stuff. But this is super important as a just quick intro on who we are and, and what we do. Yeah, just a little bit of background, who we are, what we do. Um, so um, our mission from the beginning of time has always been to make things as easy as possible with IoT. Um, as we know, there's a lot of different moving parts. There's the installation, there's securing sensors, there's decoding data off the sensors, there's transforming that data. And then there's managing those sensors. Uh, there's a lot of moving car parts, connectivity, hardware, the whole thing. So we make it easy. Um, and when we started this company, we said to ourselves, are we going to be going and selling precision agriculture um, solutions to the end customer? Are we going to be doing things with robotics? Are we going to be doing temperature monitoring in hospitals and hotels or lone worker safety? Well, we said, you know, 
there's other companies that are out there that already have those types of relationships with those end customers. These are subject matter experts, people who specialize in this, or system integrators who are really good at putting stuff together, or managed service providers who provide these services already to those types of industries. So what we wanted to do was uh, enable those types of organizations to sell IoT solutions to their customers. So enable you to add those types of sensors into your platform or use our platform. Um, so that's our strategy is enabling the community, the channel. Um, and what makes us different is the ability to mix and match any different sensor from any manufacturer, because um, typically it's not just one solution. There's a variety of solutions and you want to be able to mix and match. Um, and I'll get into that in a second. Um, we launched our platform October 2015. We're based here in Los Angeles, though we do have uh, employees all over the world from Sweden to Belarus to Paris. Where else? Oh, all over. Name a place. Romania. 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 Uh, uh, so, where else in Europe? I can't. So, somewhere else. Poland. Anyway. U.S. U.S. Colorado. Colorado. San Francisco. San Francisco. <laughs> Kansas City. So, um, so we're very we're, we're very global, um, and uh, uh, and we're very fortunate to have some amazing partners like T-Mobile, who acquired Sprint recently. We work very closely with Microsoft, uh, BASF, NG, Sodexo. Um, some really great companies who are our partners who have validated that what we're doing, we think, uh, works in a, in a good way. So why do you need to mix and match any sensor from any manufacturer? Well, because if you're going to go and deploy a solution to an end customer, they might start off and say, we need to do predictive maintenance for motors and pumps in one part of the, um, uh, in, in one part of the division. But then they might need to do temperature monitoring, let's say for bloods and vaccines in this part of the um, organization, and maybe they need to do energy monitoring you know, somewhere else. Um, and so you wanna be able to not have 50 different vendors to solve 50 different problems. Not only is it a technological nightmare, but from a business standpoint, how do you maintain all those relationships and they're all different pricing and everything else. So we're one vendor, that enables you to bolt on all these different sensors into your workflow. So, um, so that our types of customers, as we mentioned before, are network operators. These are organizations who are already selling services to end customers. So they might be servicing hotels and hospitals uh, and they want finished solutions that they can sell or system integrators who want to take mix and match of all these different sensors to come up with solutions to satisfy like mandates, um, uh, in, in government, um, such as the CO2 monitoring that's happening in schools right now for going back to school, uh, managed service providers, ISVs, <laughs> manufacturers. Um, and so then they sell to their customers, uh, to industrial, mining, agriculture, food service, hotels, hospitals. And just as an example, with one of our customers, Sprint, right before COVID, um, we're going to kind of flex here. And that's like the, a cool word, right? Is that still cool? Flex? Uh, it's no longer cool because you said it, but it okay. was cool a minute ago. Yeah, I jumped the shark, <laughs> uh, which is probably a phrase that you don't even know. But... Yeah, so we went way back. Yeah, time. that's like Fonzie. <laughs> um, so here's, a, here's a, uh, a deployment at a hospital. And this is 90 days worth of deployments at, uh, through Sprint prior to COVID. An arena, uh, Chick-fil-A, university, a farm, a lab, a golf club. Uh, another school, grocery store, right? This is 90 days. So what's really important about what I'm showing here is uh, scalability. You know, people talk about, oh, we've got one deployment with 5,000 sensors. Great, you know, we've got a deployment at a big hotel in New York City that's, you know, very similar to that. But what's hard is what if you have 10,000 locations and a few sensors? So it, you gotta have a platform that scales that can handle all of those types of situations. And as you can see, I just keep on going through over and over and over. Um, so there are thousands and thousands of locations that have been deployed using our platform. So even though we've made it easy, uh, it's the real deal. Um, it's, uh, it, it, it scales. So um, why don't I stop blabbing and I'll kick it over to, uh, to Cameron. Yeah, sure. So I'm going to jump in a little bit more on the product side and talk a little bit more, uh, maybe give a, a quick demo as well. But um, on some of that stuff, just to reiterate, um, you know, there's some key things here. Like I show you know, overhead here, we've got you know, an example of a few sensors that we pulled together for this, but every single one of these sensors comes from a different manufacturer and solves for a different use case. So whether it's a panic button or it's predictive maintenance or it's temperature or it's leak detection or whatever it is, 
the biggest problem in IoT right now, and really what's blocking scalability, like Kevin was mentioning, is that every single one of these sensors has their own communication language and, and encryption, but it also has, this manufacturer is going to make their own API. So if I want to take this sensor and make it work in a work ticketing system, a building management system, an energy management system, a robotics system, right, to perform some information, I've got to build an integration directly from this sensor to the platform that manages all of that. But then if I want to do asset tracking in that same situation, I've then got to build an integration between this sensor and that same platform. And again, and again, and again, and again. What if it's water quality, <laughs> industrial, so, like wastewater pumps. Kevin has a magical bag over here and every time he reaches into it, a different sensor comes out. So we, you just never know what you're going to get, but it, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. So this is what we do. So this is, and actually to kind of reiterate that and show that visually, I'm going to share my screen here. Um, so this is actually our, our website, so myDevices.com. Um, and this is our marketplace where we actually showcase some, some, not all, but some of the sensors that we, we have deployments with and that we're compatible with. And as I scroll down here, what we're showing truly is our vision in the market and really what we wanted to accomplish was to solve that problem that we were just talking about, the millions of points of integration, the programming, the provisioning, and all of that that stops people from successfully deploying solutions. If you look at this uh, website here, you've got PolySense, you've got NetBox, you've got RadioBridge, you've got uh, SkySense, all of these different manufacturers making all of these different sensors. Um, and you can basically go on the site and I can go two of these, one of these, one of these and mix and match any of these. And I'm able to basically send them to anybody on this phone call today. You guys can have no idea of what's going on. Um, but what you can do is take the devices out, scan the QR codes and immediately those devices become visible, visible inside of an application layer where you can see all of the data, all the locations, you can see signal strength, battery life historical data. So here's an example, like this is a, actually a camera that's doing, you know, road weather conditions as an example. So I can actually see screenshots from the data. Uh, you know, if it's, if it's flooding, if it's icy, we can actually send this, but in the same platform, I can actually see water usage on a toilet. I can see electrical usage in a building. I can see temperature inside of a refrigerator, all inside of a single place. Now this application as is, and this is where we get into Kevin mentioned, you know, multiple different types of customers and, and of hours that we enable. If you're the type of person that just wants to take this exact solution, put your logo and colors on it, run it on your domain, and go to market by picking packaged solutions and taking them to hotels, grocery stores, restaurants. Well, we have an option for you. This platform is everything that you need to be successful. You can put your logo and colors and you can do multiple location uh, tracking, right? So I can actually see Maybe this is a restaurant chain and they've got three restaurants. I can see the specific restaurant and all the sensors that are associated with that restaurant, as well as their historical data on a chart. I can do this you know, day, week, month, year, or even a custom time range that I wanna go back and download this as a CSV or view reports. Um, I can see historical data on a table uh, in a view like this. I can also do alert settings. So back to the toilets, right? The, the water on the toilets, I can say, hey, if this toilet's using a thousand gallons of water, um, then I want to send text alerts to Valerie, Mike, Jim, and Andrew, right? Maybe my facility staff or whoever they are. I can send text and email alerts and even put in a custom message to send those alerts out to. Um, and then there's also our sensor mapping feature. This allows you to upload a floor plan of the location and you can actually see all every single icon on here represents a different sensor that's deployed in that location. And I can drag and drop these where they need to go. But at the end of the day, I can see, okay, there's a leak here. I'm logged in as Valerie. I called maintenance. And now that's stored in what's called a corrective action log, where we can actually have historical data of you know, the alerts that came in and, and what's happening. So all of that is available just by scanning in the different devices, turning them on, and then, and then deploying it. And you can do that with your logo and your colors and just deploy those solutions as is. Now, the next part of this, I would say, you know, maybe it's half and half, but I, probably less than half actually do that. That's all that they do. They put their logo and color and go to market, and that's all you need, and you can be wildly successful. But the next level of that is actually our integrations. And this really is what differentiates us between anybody else in the market today in IoT. And this is how we reach scale and, and have an effective impact on your business with very minimal disruption. So if you look at these integrations, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, uh, we have Power BI, we have Salesforce, Zendesk, Slack. You're able to take any of these sensors, scan them in and forward data to any of those platforms, or you can even do a custom webhook into any platform. 
So if your customer is using an energy management system that maybe they developed internally because it's a large enterprise, or maybe it's a standard SaaS platform that you can just get off the shelf anywhere, but they want to enhance that application by sending sensor data to that app. Maybe you want to do automated work ticketing. Hey, the HVAC's broken. I want to know immediately, not without with an employee checking on it. Well, you can put in the URL of that app and feed data there uh, for any of the sensors. And here's the great part. If I show the sample payload, what you're looking at here is when the sensor comes from the My Devices platform to any third-party app or platform, the data format is exactly the same every single time, regardless of the manufacturer, the device type, or the data. So you've got temperature, Celsius, 22 degrees, or humidity, percent, 32 percent. So single point of integration between My Devices and any third-party app makes those apps compatible immediately with 500 plus IoT sensors just by scanning in a QR code. Okay, so we do have we do have a question. I, okay. I, I know you're on the flow, and you, I hate to break the flow. You don't hate to. You love to. I love to do that. I like the <laughs> I like the curveball. You. Uh, so somebody asked, you know, what's the most popular or top selling use cases for IoT? And I'll start with something. Right. Um, here's what's really interesting, and um, it really depends on who you are as an organization. So, for example, we have some system integrators who sell to schools. And right now, uh, what's really hot with schools is uh, getting back to school and indoor air quality. In fact, there's some laws and mandates that are coming down, like in California, there's a law called, I forget, AB 841 or something like that. Um, and it requires CO2 monitors to be put into every single classroom. Um, and so if you're a system integrator who has a relationship already with those types of schools, that's hot for them right now to go sell. Um, we have another customer who sells to uh, hotels. And so the mandates for loan worker safety, there's an actual laws in place that requires um, them to provide housekeepers these buttons. It's actually this button right here. And if they feel unsafe, they could push the button and then we geolocate them within the building to the room and floor level. Um, so if you're in that industry, that's what's hot. So mandates is pretty hot and it really just depends on, you know, kind of your, your area. But generally, I would say predictive maintenance. Um, yeah, there's usually, they break it down usually into two sections. So there's either massive ROI um, or mandates are the two big ones. The third one would be adding value to existing systems, uh, like tremendous value to operations that are already happening. So panic buttons, predictive maintenance, um, temperature monitoring, uh, leak detection, um, you know, around you know, a lot of insurance companies these days and, and companies that are trying to save money because water damage can cost millions of dollars of, of damages. Uh, recently, we've seen a lot of environmental stuff. It's part of back to work. We're seeing um, you know, companies are reopening, but they're taking this opportunity kind of as a fresh slate to really understand their operations. So how can we save energy? Well, there's devices that you can actually mount on and, and track electrical current um, of you know, a building or of a room or of a piece of equipment. And, and that's been pretty popular as well. Um, but maybe what I can show is um, some examples of you know, partners that are leveraging our technology um, today and what they're deploying and what they've been successful with doing. And maybe that'll hopefully kind of spark some, um, some concepts for you guys. So for example, uh, Compass Group, uh, one of the largest, if not the largest food safety company in the world, they're doing simple automated temperature monitoring in all the refrigeration units, right? Because they have compliance. Uh, where they have to send their employees to check every single refrigerator, check the temperature, and then write it down on a piece of paper. So if they can do that through an automated process on an app through sensors, of course they will. Similarly, this company Safety Culture has a platform called iAuditor, um, and that app actually is a digital checklist. So instead of a paper log, they've actually already uh, have customers that are using their app that have digitally um, tr uh, created those temperature logs so that instead of doing pen and paper, they're actually keying it in on their phone, but now we're integrating sensor data into that to automate that app that already exists. Um, <clears throat> there's others on here uh, that are doing, uh, you know, uh, industrial stuff, HVAC monitoring, predictive maintenance on motors and pumps. Um, this is a company that's doing um, basically uh, using sensors to enhance the way they do assisted living and assisted care. So taking sensor data to enhance the experience of knowing when somebody's been, you know, an elderly person has been in a room too long, maybe there's an issue and we need to go send somebody to go help them. Um, putting panic buttons on people. So if they are, if they fall, or if they have an emergency, they can alert somebody. Um, so there's tons of these examples um, that we can go through uh, that kind of just show all the different ways. And, and I know we've got our guys from SVT Robotics on today. So this is an interesting one. Um, so to shout out those guys, I mean, 
using sensor technology. This was an unscheduled shout out. Unscheduled yeah, shout totally. out. I didn't even know they were going to be on. So here you go, guys. We were going to do it anyways, whether you're here or not. So you just, you know, uh, so, you know, by taking sensor technology and adding that to a robotics platform so that you can enhance the way that the, ro the robots are behaving. So think about robots in a manufacturing plant where you're moving things around, you're automating the way you, you take deliveries and put, you know, shelf them or inventory them. Um, by using sensor technology, we can create a smarter, more enhanced process. We can say, hey, if we know that this pallet is full, well, then don't, the robot shouldn't pick something up and put it, try to put it on that pallet because it won't work. But if we know that it's empty and you're close to that location, then it's optimal to go, go put that there. And that's just one example, um, you know, for that particular use case. But um, anyways, there's tons of these, you know, all kinds of different solutions out there for IoT, just depending on who you are, who your customers are. And part of what we provide in our partnership is that consultation with you. We understand who are you, what industries do you target, uh, who are your customers, and we can kind of sit there and say, okay, here's the solutions that are ideal to go to market with based on our past experience. Because if you look at all these sensors, yeah. the sky really is the limit with what you can deploy. So there's another question in here. So Christopher asked, um, any demand performance management question mark or any construction-based use cases? Um, so you talk about the construction-based use cases. So we haven't formally announced this yet, but we've worked with a partner to do um, tool tracking on construction sites. Um, tools go disappearing. And there are some simple tool tracking uh, technology that's out there, which is basically your cell phone and a BLE um, tracker. But the problem is if you don't have your cell phone close by, um, you've, got a, you've got a problem with it. So this combines some long range. So an actual construction sites or there's tall buildings or uh, large, you're actually able to track it all around the property. Um, and the similar technology is being used for forklift tracking inside of um, facilities. So being able to see where the forklifts are, which I didn't even know that was a problem, but I walked in literally to um, a facility the other day that was 1 million square feet. And I was like, wow, this is like walking into Costco times 10. And they had all these forklifts going around 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And what the problem was is that somebody would park a uh, forklift, their shift was over, and they were supposed to bring it back to a location, but they literally get up and they walk away. And then the next guy's shift, he's got to come and find it. So they're wasting all this time. Um, anyway, there's hundreds of thousands of dollars. So uh, yes, construction, um, uh, that's one example, um, but uh, really kind of an endless, uh, an endless list of, of stuff. Maybe we should show inside the platform, the back office, because yeah. there's, there's a couple parts to the platform. There is the front end, which we showed you. There's the devices, and the front end lets you set alerts and you know thresholds and that kind of thing. But then there's a whole back office that lets you manage your customers as well, uh, which is equally important. Yeah, so the back office really is how we reach our scalability in terms of deployments, but also in terms of you guys as partners being able to have visibility into what's actually going on and provide customer support to your customers. So what you're looking at here is the, the uh, actually the device registry. Let me switch to the customer's view. Um, and this is timed out. So just give me a sec to let it reload. But what you're gonna see here is uh, the customer's view first. So what happens is we actually create a specific realm for our partners. So I'm gonna show the IoT in a box realm because it's you know our kind of demo realm where we've got a lot of stuff living in there and it's a good spot to kind of show a bunch of data. But in this realm, you would have your own with your company name here, and it's specific to your white label app and all of your customers. And these customers, what you can see is, for example, I've got Zach Thomas here. Um, here's his login, and here's actually his location that he's the general manager for. And if I open that up, I can actually see all the different sensors and their corresponding IDs in that location. So the front end is something that a customer and customer, the Chick-fil-A GM can actually see and manage and see his refrigerator temps and manage that very easily. The back end is where you can actually see you know, from a high level, uh, super admin uh, uh, perspective, all the different locations, all the different sensors. And I can actually go in here and I can remove devices. I can uh, add devices, uh, like bulk upload devices to accounts. I can remove them if they're not paying. I can do, I can even remote access this account if I want to. I can do remote assistance and it will actually log me in on behalf of this user so that I can actually see what they see and, and what's going on so I can provide customer support. And, um, and so, you're, so you're also saying like, for example, if you've deployed, 5,000 sensors out there and you want to now uh, change the alert threshold because you've learned something new 
like you need to, to do it? Do you need to go individually to each of those sensors to each of those locations or how would you do that? No, everything can be done bulk. So that's like even in a device registry, you can actually start to see, you know, less customer specific, but I can actually see all of the hardware with their IDs and everything that's out there, but I can group things based on their locations and the, uh, which, which account they're corresponding to. And I can actually do bulk uh, modifications. So maybe devices need to send every 10 minutes instead of every 20 minutes, or maybe alerts need to be updated, mm. or maybe users need to be pulled off of accounts or whatever you need to do. You've got this bulk action section up here that allows you to make all of those uh, different modifications. So you can really on the fly make, you know, large set actions. So you talked about, you know, one location with 5,000 sensors, that's cool. But how do you do 10,000 locations with a few sensors each? Yeah. Well, this allows you to kind of manage that at a very high level easily. Okay. So there's a commercial question that came in and somebody's asking, uh, and we'll stay on this in a second, but we'll come back to it. But their question was more on the commercial side, like what price does a typical reseller or system integrator set per month for each device? Mm. Um, yeah, it's a good question. So it really depends on where you fit in, in the channel, right? And what value you're providing. So, and also what other services you might blend this with. So I think on, an ex on one level, you know, if you're a managed service provider and you're providing software services, or maybe you're doing helping with the installation, or maybe you're doing, you know, full support, you know, fingers on a keyboard, helping reset passwords and, and, you know, leveraging the console we just showed to do bulk updates for them on their behalf. Well, typically we just see a managed service fee bundled in at a large rate in the thousands of dollars per month per site, even depending on which um, locations that you're bundling in. Now on the exact opposite side of that, we have our, what I call our, solution resellers basically and this is kind of like the t-mobile bubble um, where you can actually see if you go to like t-mobile iot marketplace if you google it you'll actually see our solutions white labeled that they're providing you know to their customers <clears throat> but they're doing it on a more um just micro level on the sensor basis where they see and like i don't know five dollars per month per sensor for yeah. example right so whether you're bundling it into man managed service and just offering everything as a, on a recurring basis or you're doing per device it's totally up to you but the going rate on a per device basis is right around that $5 a month, which gives you tons of margin, you know, based on our, our price. And it, and it depends. I mean, if you're in the oil industry and the value of the data that you're providing is very high, then it's obviously going to be much higher. The good thing is with, with our pricing and what you pay us, you can set your own prices. Um, and you're the one who's making the majority of the margin. See, we realize that the real value is the service provider, the person who installs it, the person who supports it. Uh, the person who um, is pulling more data um, and providing insights to the end customer. So you're the ones who should be uh, making the majority of the money. Uh, we're a tool that enables you to go do your job um, better. So um, yeah, did we ever play our video? I don't think so. Should we? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, we're gonna play just a quick two minute, 40 second video, which really kind of says things better than sometimes we can um, when we're live, even though I know I'm really good at it. And he's like scale from one to 10. If you guys could put in the chat, what you think he is. <laughs> and I'm going to make it up. Even if you say he's good, I'm going to probably say the wrong things in here. But uh, yeah, he's probably like a two. So let's um, maybe let's do our video and, um, and then start asking questions in the QA and the chat. And we want to get the real interactive with you guys. We'll poke around and we'll show you things. Um, but let's have fun with this thing. So let's go ahead and play this and go from there. And while the video is going, scale of one to 10 and scale of one to 10, I'm just, what do you, Kevin versus Cameron, we're going to do a contest. Here's the video. Here's how my devices makes it easy to deploy hundreds of sensors and solutions. Here are a few of the my devices gateways. They can connect with sensors within thousands of feet indoors or miles outdoors. To activate, simply plug in the power and then scan the QR code. My Devices offers a library of over 400 different solutions and sensors that are all pre-programmed and pre-configured to work without any additional effort. I'm going to say that again. My Devices offers over 400 different sensors and solutions that are all pre-programmed and pre-configured to work without any additional effort. Just scan it and use it. You can choose from any of the pre-packaged solutions like Push and Protect, Simply Sense, Countario, or mix and match from our library of devices to build your own solution. Once you find the solution you're looking for, use the My Devices app to scan the QR code. This automatically activates your device on the network as well as on the My Devices app 
or any third party app or platform of your choice. By using the My Devices app, you have the ability to leverage our powerful set of features. You can manage multiple locations, select a specific location to see the sensor data associated with that location, select a specific device to view historical data based on that sensor, set alert thresholds based on the device data, set an unlimited list of contacts to receive alerts via text and or email. Set alert rules like don't alert me during certain times or change the alert conditions at certain times. Use our sensor mapping tool to visualize data on a floor map. Add corrective action notes to devices in alert state. Add an unlimited list of contacts with different user permissions like can view, can edit, or admin. And take normalized, decoded data and forward to any third party app or platform for customized reporting, automated work ticketing, digital checklists, and more. By licensing the platform, you have access to all of these plug and play solutions and features, and you can customize the app with your logo and your colors to integrate seamlessly with your business. My Devices gives you the ability to easily deploy over 400 different sensors and solutions on any network. For more, so we have another question that came in on the Q and A. <clears throat> and by the way, I did put a little um, uh, chat request. I said Cameron's presentation skills. So all you guys out there, go ahead and rate them one to ten. <laughs> we all know it'll be a well. Anyway, I'll let you guys decide. Um, so Richard says I have a solution that I'm working on that requires sensors to be mobile. For example, That's a truck. Eleven, ten, ten, ten. What the? No, 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 guys, no, no, no. 10 is good, guys. 10, mm. one's bad. 10 is good. So it's, it's, yeah, it's, 10's the worst. <laughs> He's the worst. 10. <laughs> oh, oh 10. man, this is not good. All right. Oh, I got 11. Oh, oh man. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. uh, so Richard's working on a solution that requires sensors to be mobile, for example, on a truck. And he says, does your app require the sensors to be in constant contact with the internet? Would you like me to answer that or you want me to? I'm you... curious to see how you would answer that. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a go. <laughs> okay, so it really, uh, so the answer is no, it does not have to be in constant contact. So for example, with uh, cold chain, so we've got a few customers that have, um, that are monitoring blood actually and other um, important stuff uh, in trucks that are in route. And what they wanna do is they want to measure the temperature in the warehouse uh, or in the labs and then they want to measure it in the truck, and then they want to measure it at the at the destination. And this particular uh, use case, they own these areas here, and then they don't own the vehicles that are that are moving, but they own the stuff it goes in. So they have temperature sensors inside, and there's a data logger that's inside of there. And so what happens is the readings are actually getting saved on the sensor itself. So what happens is when it's in the facility and they have some connectivity, it uploads all the data and it stores the historical. Then it leaves in route and if they don't have connectivity which they can if they actually wanted to put a gateway with an lte backhaul they could have live connectivity in the vehicles but for whatever reason if they don't have it or don't want to or don't need it you can put you know one of something like this in there records it and then when it gets to the next destination all the data automatically comes up without having to do anything now you are restricted based on the sensor itself so if the sensor doesn't have data logging capabilities with it um, it, then, then, then it can't. But otherwise, you would then put a um, a gateway in. What do you think? How do I do? On a scale of one to ten. One to ten. Like a three. A three. <laughs> no, it was pretty good. Like an eight. Okay. Eight. Solid B plus. All right. Um, okay. So here, um, so Patrick is asking. We need specific examples of mm -hmm. how we can deploy the IoT sensors. This will help us sell the potential to our clients different industries, different products, et cetera. Also include how, to, how secure the IoT de devices. Many uh, clients see the news and are skittish of the security of the devices. Um, okay, so a couple of different questions. We'll answer the security in a second. I think what we should do is talk about use cases um, uh, and examples of, uh, of deploying them. Um, should we show like our partner page or, or some, like Countario or things like that, do you think? Okay, yeah. I can do that. Okay. Yeah. So let me pull up some our solution pages here because I think these will be a little more specific 
in terms of deployments you know, that you can do straight away immediately. So what you're looking at here is, uh, if I actually go back to our website, we talked a lot about the sensors, right? There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sensors and all these different things. And, and they all do you know, solve for different problems. And even on our site, you can click on some of these and you can see we do unboxing videos and things like that. So you can kind of get some specific examples just by clicking through these and seeing the videos and materials that we have. But at the top of the page, what we show is our package solutions. So Kaltario, Simply Sense, Predict Alert, Push and Protect, you know, there's a bunch down here as well. What these are is our attempt at understanding the market, not our attempt, but our, our ability to understand the market and know what's hot, what's out there, what's selling, what are our partners going to market with, and then identifying which sensors, if there's 500 sensors, if I mix these two and this gateway and put them together, that's a solution that you can go to market with that we know will be effective because we, you know, we have the, the history there that shows us people are buying people counting sensors or this or that. So what we then do is build these brands around them that keeps it super generic so that our partners can go to market selling those solutions under their own brand. Um, but this is all the marketing material and everything that's needed. So this is what's provided to our partners and as an just, example. Let, let's pause for a second because I think this is really important. So you'll notice there's no pricing on this page. And if the leads come in, we give those to our customers. We are a channel first uh, company. So these are just examples that help you, uh, like specific examples of not only how to deploy sensors, but who to sell to, how to sell them a uh, continuum. Sorry. Yeah, the how to sell part's important. So first, this is kind of the marketing, right? So healthcare, food service, transportation, but what Simply Sense is, is a temperature monitoring solution for these industries. So here's some screenshots of, you know, how the app works. There's reports, there's multiple contacts, there's text alerts. Uh, here's some testimonial videos from some real customers out in the field. You know, here's some frequently asked questions, but what's provided to our partners is the corresponding how to sell page for that solution. So these, so temperature monitoring, the value of the solution is that uh, healthcare, hospitals, sorry, hospitals, food service, grocery stores, restaurants, whatever it is, anybody that's doing any kind of cold storage, they are mandated to actually log temperatures to prove that the, the food or the pharmaceuticals or the vaccines are actually stored at the appropriate temp. So if they're doing that manually today, like a lot of them are, the ROI to put a sensor in there and automate that process is massive. Plus one text alert from a temperature sensor that says, hey, your refrigerator's out of range, can save tens of thousands to even millions of dollars of inventory, depending on what's stored in there. So this how to sell page gets you everything you need to start prospecting for that. We have template emails. These are literally emails uh, for each industry that you can copy paste and start doing outbound campaigns to the industries that you're, you're targeting. Um, we've got a demo video. This is a quick video that after the email, they're gonna say, hey, can you give me more information? Or they're gonna want a phone call. You say, no problem, check out this video. And it gives a full tour of the solution. And then we have pricing uh, recommendations with a corresponding ROI calculators, customer references of people that are actually using this, PowerPoint sales presentations, flyers, FAQs, security docs, right? All of that. And that's just for one solution. We then do that again for push and protect. This and is I go back to that real quick if you don't mind. So you can see even in here, so your question about security. So there's even uh, this security privacy documentation that explains um, where the security is uh, at the sensor, in transit, uh, in the cloud, um, you know, uh, all, all that stuff is, is, is all described in here. And this is universal for the, for the entire platform. There's also installation videos as well. Now, granted, this is one vertical, you know, one thing, temperature monitoring. Think of it as kind of like the bread and butter of IoT. Temp monitoring is like bread and butter or water? What would you call it? Water. Water. It's like water, like everybody does temp monitoring, right? <laughs> so it was kind of a no brainer to put something like that together. But if you have a custom solution, like somebody was asking earlier, like precision agriculture, and you're going to go to market, you can think this way. You can use this kind of as your template to put your own solution together. We don't have to build these for you, but this is a good template for you. So he'll give you an example of maybe some other, um, other ones as well. Yeah. So this is another example. This is our push and protect solution. And it was really geared around the hotels back in 2019 um, when mandates were, were uh, forced on the brands and in different cities and states throughout the country where they actually had to give their housekeepers devices that keep them safe. So if I'm a housekeeper uh, and I feel threatened or something's going on, I push this panic button, text and email alerts go out to you know anybody that they want to, but typically it's security or people on site. And then this device actually tracks via Bluetooth my exact location in the hotel. So in fact, there's a really short video here that even shows exactly how this solution works. Um, so you can see on here, it just pushes the panic button 
Um, and then immediately inside the app that we showed earlier, which would be your white labeled app um, with your logo and colors on it, we can actually pinpoint the exact location of where that emergency is coming from. Now, if that person starts to run or leave the situation, it updates uh, with the newest or last known location. And then at the end of the day, what happens is we have a, a log or a report, an incident report that comes out explaining you know, the incident that happened, who pushed their button, when they pushed it, and so on. So this is another package solution. We took a combination of LoRa technology, Bluetooth, and cellular, combined it all with a gateway beacons and a panic button, bundled it all together, put a website for it, and then gave it to our partners and said, hey, there's mandates. There's people required to deploy this solution. And we meet all the requirements and we're even a preferred solution or, or a validated solution by a lot of the brands. Um, and then again, we have a how to sell page, template emails, demo video, pricing and everything. And one of our one of our participants, Corey, is asking, how do you get access? How do you get started in access to this page and all the marketing? Um, so once you become one of our partners, there's two plans you can sign up on gold or the platinum plan. And, if, if you're interested in learning more in the in the link, um, you can click on it, sign up, get an account only, talk with our team and we can answer. But once you sign up, you get access to all the sales enablement as well as access to our team that shares insights of you know how to do these uh, types of things. So you become part of a community, but there's an actual login on these. So every one of them has a forward slash how to sell page and there's a password and you only get the password when you become a partner. So, right. That's the way to do it. Um, okay, we have another question. Okay. Unless you want, if, was there anything else you wanted to say or should I ask this? No, let's, let's do the question. Okay. So um, how do we procure devices? Do we buy them directly from you? Mm. Um, would you like me to answer that or would you like me to answer Maybe that? I'll take this one. You okay. can score me. Um, okay, uh, Cameron, how do we procure devices? We being the customers, do they have to buy them from my devices? Okay, so this is actually really important. Um, so there's a I'm going to answer this in a couple of ways. The first answer is no, you do not have to buy the devices from us. You can go to any manufacturer of any device. In fact, we have a lot of situations where our customers actually have their customers that already have devices deployed, right? And they want to bring them in. So there's all kinds of different scenarios. So the short answer is no, you can get the devices anywhere you want. Um, and even if it's not in our catalog or library, we can actually bring those devices in. So it can be any device out in the wild that can work with this, with this system. Now, the value that we provide in terms of the hardware is one of the biggest problems, aside from the technical nightmare of integrating all these different sensors from different manufacturers, is the logistical nightmare of actually uh, dealing with vendor relationships across multiple different manufacturers. You're dealing with different lead times. You're different, dealing with different pricing models. Um, there's programming and provisioning, and there's back and forth with the manufacturer about you know, what's what and, and how you want the devices to work and all of that. So one of the things that we do is we provide that as a service. So that's that's partially our, our value, but no, it's absolutely not a requirement. A lot of folks that we work with actually have relationships with manufacturers directly and are just procuring the hardware straight through. And then in that back end console that we showed, you can actually register the devices accordingly and make everything work just fine. Um, but there is you know something to be said about having a single point of contact and we work back and do the RMAs and the, manuf and the warranties and the returns and, and we do the provisioning and we do the procurement and, and shipping of all the hardware. So totally up to you, but there is value in, in having us do it for you. Yeah, and I, uh, I put in the, uh, in the chat, I believe, that if you wanna schedule a call with us, there's a link that is uh, mydevices.com forward slash channel pro. And we are happy to get on a call, answer any questions for you, uh, that type of thing. Yep. Um, so let me see if there's any other questions I and see here. In that, on those calls too, um, you know, I know there's some questions about specific examples. We can certainly get really more granular on a call like that where it's one-on-one. -on -one. Right now it's really hard because I know there's a lot of you out there. It's hard to tell specifically what the industries are, you know, what the stories are that would be most useful for you. So if we get on a call and talk about some of the opportunities that you have, walk through what next steps might look like, how we can partner and help out. So yeah, please guys jump on a, grab that link and, and schedule calls and we're, we're happy to get all your questions answered and, and move forward. Okay, and we, we do have a, a question in the chat. So we're getting questions in QA, we're getting uh, questions in chat. So uh, Eddie, shout out to Eddie. What's up Eddie? Um, Eddie says, uh, how about white label app? How long does it take to deliver that? And remember uh, white label app uh, means that you also get this entire realm with a, uh, you get the app, you get the back office, you get the, you get everything. Um, but how long would that typically take? So 
take me through the journey. I schedule a call with, with one of your teammates and, and I say, hey, I'm interested. Take me through that journey. What's, what's that look like? Yeah, so we, we get on a call and start to understand, you know, who you are and, and, you know, what questions you have. We make sure we get everything answered, go through the different plans that we have and what, you know, why gold, why platinum, what the differences are. And then you say, hey, we're ready to go. We want to go on a gold plan, for example. Okay. DocuSign gets sent out. Uh, agreement is signed. There's a one-time setup fee. Uh, once that's paid, we're a week at most away from, from delivering a white label. At this point, we're seeing it turn around in a couple of days. Uh, it just depends on the backlog and everything, but very, very quickly in okay. a matter of days. So, so that happens, right? So, so yep. I sign the contract. I'm like, great. I totally, I buy in. I'm like ready to rock and roll. I want to start deploying to my customers or inside my organization. You know, and you guys are helping me figure out, you know, oh, that's the right sensor, whatever, any questions I have. Yep. Um, great. I sign the contract, I send you my logo. Uh, and then what? Like, how is there like a handoff call? Like, what happens after that? Yeah, it's what we call our go to market strategy session call, basically. So, as soon as somebody signs up, we deliver the white label and then we do our, our go to market session. So, that's where we really say, okay, you're a partner now. Okay. First thing we're going to do is learn more about your business uh, very specifically and understand your go-to-market strategy. Do you have customers immediately and we need to start procuring hardware and putting together the solution for you and going? Or are you looking to do outbound prospecting? Are you doing prospecting through direct sales or through indirect sales? Um, all of these things we start to figure out so that we can build a strategy for you. And that's part of the handoff where you then get transitioned over to account management. Now, there's also a separate uh, conversation or call where it's more training where we say, hey, uh, here's the front end app, here's how to use it, it's got your logo and colors, here's how to add users, add devices, here's the back end console, here's how to do registry, here's how to do you know, customer management. So on a more technical level, we also sit down and, and train you on, on how to leverage all the tools. Okay, cool. Um, is there anything that we didn't cover? I think we covered a lot. Uh, again, this was really about um, us just sharing at a high level, my devices, uh, what we provide to to you as the customer who then can deploy to your customers um, we also want to do a little bit of a test you know we like i said we rebroadcast it live on linkedin we did it on youtube so a little bit of a technology thing but what you're going to start seeing from my devices um, which you saw last year prior to the pandemic was we on a regular basis we were shouting out a lot of customers and we were talking about some very specific uh, use cases and that's what's going to start happening um, in the coming months here. We'll start scheduling that. And we'll start to see those um, across a wide variety of from agriculture to robotics to hospitality. I mean, some of the use cases we have are all HVAC monitoring, which is a really big one. Um, so we're really excited about that. And if there's anything you guys want to see from us, please you know, reach out to us. Let us know. Um, but uh, yeah, we're, we're super excited. Let me just see if there's anything else. Looks like there might be a couple more in the uh, in the chat, but um, yeah. Before we before we wrap, um, just want to say thanks for everybody uh, for for joining this. And again, we'll send the link out to get on a call, and we would love to get on with each and every one of you and, and talk about your business and how we can you know adapt what we're doing. But is there anything else? Any questions or anything left? That we uh, can do? No, but there is a funny one that came in that somebody said. I've seen the driving cart F1 racing via Amazon AWS and all the data IoT points coming back to the client headquarters. And, um, and that cracks me up because like, I'm now like this big F1 fan. So I'm like, <laughs> hey, wait a second. Do I know this person? So, um, yeah, we won't, we won't answer that one. Um, anyway, I think we should wrap it up and yep. um, get in touch with us. And we're going to be doing this more often. But thank you all for showing up. We really appreciate it and uh, spending time with us and uh, excited to be working with new partners and um, meeting new ones. So thank you very much. So we'll hand it back to Channel Pro. Yep, Michael, all yours. Awesome, thank you, gentlemen, great stuff. And uh, I just want to um, remind folks a couple things. One is there is a chat over, uh, or I'll just tell you what it is, but there's a URL, mydevices.com forward slash Channel Pro. You can schedule a call with the team and also you can find out who finally won the rankings here between one and 11, apparently. Um, and then also a reminder that tomorrow we will be uh, sending out additional info. So uh, keep an eye on your inbox for that. It'll be a link to the recording plus some other links and info. 
All right. Well, Cameron and Kevin, thank you very much. We covered so much today. I'm sure we will see you guys again. Great stuff. IoT is booming. This is exactly why Channel Pro a couple of years ago started our IoT playbook initiative. We cover things like this and put these guys in front of our audience to learn more. So thank you very much, gentlemen. This has been a great experience today. All right. So that's it, everybody. Have a great day and we'll follow up tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye now. Bye, everybody. Thank you.